Guys, how adorable are these pumpkin ornaments? These are done with the snow globe pattern and in this video, I'm gonna show you how. Hello, hello, my name is Stacey Ann and I wanna tell you guys how to make one of these adorable jack-o'-lantern ornaments from start to finish. One of my Ornament Girls team members, Sarah, is the one who originally came out with this idea for the snow globe pattern and she cut the face out from vinyl using her Cricut machine. Now I am going to try to link to some resources below for those of you guys who have a Cricut or a Silhouette machine and you have the ability to be able to cut out something like this. But for those of you guys who don't, you could create a similar look by possibly using paint, maybe puffy paint or something like that on top of this fabric, or you could even use duct tape <laughs> and just create these shapes and put them on. Get creative and if you have any really awesome ideas for a way to recreate this, without cutting them out of vinyl, please put them in the comments below. You'll be able to help out all the other people who are watching this. We actually do plan to post a video soon about how you can create your own images similar to this with your Cricut. So be on the lookout for that. In the meantime, below the video, you'll find a link to where you can get a printable supply list listing all the things out that you'll need to make this. And let's talk about those things now. And as far as fabric goes, you'll see that each of these two ornaments both are made entirely with one fabric. I used kind of a more country lighter color here on this one and then for this one I used this really pretty shimmery copper fabric. This is actually um, Glimmer Solids by Cloud9 and they create completely different looks. This one's a little bit more dark and mysterious <laughs> and this one is way more like cutesy and country but they're both really simple. So let's talk about what you will need to make them. So first of all, you're going to need a square to put your iron on face on. And so if you're going to be doing a snow globe on both sides, so you're doing the pumpkin on both sides of your ornament, you will need two of these. And this is about four inches. You can do anywhere really between three and a half to four inches for this flat square. I'm actually going to be doing the basic star on the back of mine. And that's only because I've only got two of my little pumpkin faces and I want to do like two different ornaments. So I'm only doing... Um, a pumpkin face on one side of mine. So I only need one square. You're also going to need a bunch of two by three inch rectangles. Again, this is going to vary depending on what ornament that you are making. So if you're doing the pumpkin face on both halves of your ornament, you're going to need 32 of these two by three inch rectangles. If you're going to do exactly like what I'm doing here, and I'm going to be doing a three layer basic star on the back of mine, you're going to need 36 of these rectangles or you could do your own thing on the back. You don't have to do either of those two patterns. You could do anything. And if that's the case, you will have to calculate how many pieces or what size pieces you're gonna need for that particular pattern. And perhaps the most important bit, the pumpkin face. This is an iron-on vinyl transfer that Sarah made for me on her Cricut. And I'll put a link below the video to where you guys can find a template for the same or at least something very similar. And for reference, it's about two and a quarter inches wide from the tips of his smile. And then it is about, I believe, a little bit less than two inches top to bottom. And you're gonna need a bunch of straight pins. So again, this is gonna vary depending on what pattern you do on your back side of the ornament. It's probably gonna take about 175 pins if you're doing a snow globe on both sides, so the pumpkin face on both sides. And it's gonna take a little bit more than that if you're doing the basic star, uh, probably closer to 200, 225. And then of course, like I mentioned before, if you're doing a different pattern, then you'll have to adjust your pin count based on that pattern. You're also gonna need a three inch soft foam ball that's been marked into eight equal segments. If you don't have a pre-marked ball like this one, we do have another video, I'll put a link below, that will show you how you can easily mark your own foam balls into eight equal segments. We've even got a printable template that you can use, which makes it really super easy. You're also gonna need some ribbon for any bows or hanger that you wanna to add to this. I'm just gonna be using some green. I usually use about 24 inches per bow and I typically will do two bows and then about 10 inches or so for a hanger. And for tools, you'll need some scissors and a flexible tape measure. All right, so let's start. So let's start with putting the transfer on the square of fabric. So the vinyl pieces are actually on the back of this. It's like the sticky side is down. I'm just gonna put it somewhat centered as much as possible. You can eyeball this on my square of fabric and then take a piece of parchment paper and lay that over the top. And with no steam, you wanna press an iron down on top of this and hold it down for a good 15 seconds. Okay, that was about 15 seconds. And we'll move this piece. And then hopefully when we carefully peel this off, the vinyl is gonna be sticking to the fabric. 
That worked out nicely. So if it is not sticking, then you'll just wanna press down again for like another 10 or 15 seconds. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and start making the ornament. All right, so now let's stick this guy on the ball. And I'm looking at the, putting the nose in the very center over the pole. And normally with a snow globe ornament, I'll say to stick a pin right through your center point of your image and then use that and stick it directly into the pole of your ball. And the pole is where, of course, where all these lines are converging on either half of the ball. In this case though, I am thinking that's not gonna be a good idea because this is vinyl. Usually with fabric, if you put a hole in the um, fabric, you can, when you take the pin back out, you can sort of nudge out the hole and you'll never see it again. But I'm not so sure that's gonna be the case with the vinyl and I don't wanna like put a hole in there that might be there forever. <laughs> so we're gonna eyeball this. Um, but if you flip it over, depending on your fabric that you've used, you should be able to see this through the fabric a little bit. And I can see my nose right there. So I'm gonna try to aim that for sitting it directly over that pole marking on the ball. And I wanna pin this into place, but there's one other thing I wanna do before I pin this down. I also wanna make sure that I've got a line running straight up and down, top to bottom, through the face, because I'm gonna be using these lines to help me line up all the triangles that are surrounding it. It just really helps you keep things really straight and symmetrical. So we've got a couple of things to kind of worry about here. Again, with a pin, if there was a pin through his nose, it'd be easy. You just stick it in there and then you can shift it side to side and until you get everything lined up. Can't really do that now, so you gotta kind of carefully hold it in place and eyeball things. And I'm looking at the bottom of his mouth, the center of his mouth is right there, and that's lining up with a line. Hopefully you can see that. I think I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead, still trying to hold that nose on the center. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this into place. Down here, you can pin anywhere. We can always move these pins later. Okay, and I'm just gonna check and make sure I'm still have my nose like over the pole. I think it is. And now just trying to write right down the center of his eyes here, making sure it's lining up with the line below. It's gonna take you an extra second now, but I promise you it makes the whole rest of the ornament like way easier. So now we'll do the same thing side to side and I'm just like looking at it. If you did the top and bottom pretty straight, then the sides should be straight naturally but I'm just sort of looking at it to make sure. I think that looks that looks pretty good. I feel like my I might have come down just a little bit, but yeah, I think I'm happy with that. So that's in place. Now we can start adding our first layer. Let me back up a second. So you've got all these little wrinkles. It's not laying perfectly flat. Don't worry about that yet. You're not gonna be able to get this thing. I mean, we're talking about a square piece of square flat fabric laying on a round surface. It's not gonna go flat, but we're gonna kind of work with that as we add the pieces going around. The other thing I wanna mention is for layer one, we're gonna place some marker pins that are gonna help with keeping all of our pieces at the same distance from the center going around his face. And it takes like, I don't know, two minutes of prep work, but then it'll make putting all your triangles on super easy. And it also will keep everything really straight. So the combination of these marker pins and then using the lines is gonna make your pumpkin look amazing. Okay, so he's looking a little ragged now because I just did the whole first half of this ornament and I realized that my audio had turned off. So we're starting over. So we're gonna start by figuring out how far out we want all of our triangles to be sitting that are surrounding his face. And I want all my triangles to sit evenly around his face. Even though he's wider from like side to side than he is top to bottom, I still want all my triangles to be even. So to do that, and you might have a different image or even a different vinyl thing on here or whatever, so you're gonna have to do this for your image, but start at where you know your center point is. For me, it's the nose and just measure out in any direction. Okay, so I'm measuring out to the right. And just go like, take your tape measure and decide where do you want your triangles to sit? For me, in this particular image, I don't want my triangles to cover any part of the vinyl. I want it to be completely inside of my center of my ornament. So I know I need to come then at least, looks like I need to come at least one and three eighths of an inch out from his nose. So if I do that this way, top to bottom, measuring out from the center of his nose, that puts me like right there. So it's a little further out, I'm gonna have a little more orange space at the top and bottom, but that's okay, because my circle around him is gonna look pretty even all the way around. So now that we know that, one and three eighths inch, and whatever your measurement is that you know, do it in a few places so you can kind of figure out what's gonna look best. 
But now that we know that, we can use these lines on the foam to place our first four marker pins going around. And this is gonna give us, it's, it takes a second, I mean, it takes only like a minute, but it's gonna give us a really great way to be able to evenly place all those first four triangles. So I'm gonna start here in the middle again on the nose, but this time I'm gonna really focus on following a line on the foam. And I do like to start top, bottom, left, and right for these first four. So I'm measuring out again along the line, and then at that measurement that I had figured out, for me, one and three eighths, I'm gonna stick a pin into the foam here, but I'm only gonna leave it like stick, I'm only gonna push it in halfway, I'm gonna leave it sticking out, okay, because it's just a marker pin. And then we'll do the same thing directly opposite on the other side, coming out following the opposite line, actually it's the same line, but opposite side of his face, one and three eighths, like that, and we'll do the same thing top to bottom. I already have holes in my fabric because I already did this once. <laughs> no point on that pin. Okay, so there is my first four marker pins, and from here we can start placing our triangles. So we're gonna grab the first rectangle, and you're gonna hold this lengthwise with the pattern side facing away from you and take the top edge and fold it over about three eighths of an inch or so. Now you do not have to be exact about that. And then pin through the top center, just a hair below the top folded edge. Now, if you wanna be really exact about your center, you can always fold this in half lengthwise like this, like a book, finger press the center and then unfold and this is where your center point is but pin just a hair below that top folded edge and in the center. You do not have to be exact about the center. So right at one of those four pins, we're gonna pin this into the foam. So just pin it as close to the marker pin as you can, and then once you have it in there, you can remove the marker pin and it's done. You don't even need it anymore. Press it flat down. And now we're gonna create the basic triangle fold. We're gonna take the left side of this and fold it straight down and then we're gonna take the right side and fold it straight down. Now the right side is gonna just barely overlap the left side, and the reason we're doing that is so that we only have one line down the center, we don't have any gap, and we can use one pin only to hold both sides. But before you do that, we're gonna make sure that this line is lining up with the line on the foam below. And then once you've got that lined up, just take another pin and pin down there at the very bottom, close to the bottom edge, one pin to hold both halves in place. And we're not gonna pin down the corners just yet. Let's do the same thing for those remaining three marker pins. I don't know if you can see this, but you can see my pin head just a teeny bit in there and that means that I got my pin head like a little bit too close to the folded edge, the top folded edge of my rectangle. So I'm lowering it just a little bit, that way you can't see the pin. All right, so there is the first four triangles. Now we want to go ahead and pin down those outer corners but before we do that, the reason we saved it for now is because we want to just try to smooth out the rest of this loose fabric as much as we possibly can before we pin these down. Now, just like I mentioned before, you're not gonna be able to get it perfectly flat because we've got a piece of fabric trying to wrap around a ball and it's just not gonna happen perfectly, but we can do the best that we can before we go to put these last four um, triangles on. And so all I'm gonna do is as I do each corner, as I get ready to pin it into place, pin it flat down, then I'll smooth as much as I can of that fabric below underneath of it first. So I'm pulling this down and then smoothing this bottom corner of the triangle over it and then taking a pin and pinning down both parts. Now, if you're having a hard time doing that with one pin, you can also take and smooth down that fabric underneath and then pin it on its own underneath like this to hold it and then go ahead and take the triangle and uh, pin it in place like that. So you can do it either way, whatever works for you. Every single corner is gonna be a little bit different and I always end up having one corner that's like extra difficult. It happens every single time. 
Um, but just do your best. And one other thing to keep in mind here is some of them, some of these edges, you're not going to be able to get like perfect looking at all. In fact, some of them, you might even have a lot, like a big bulge like this. But if you do, it's okay. Try to keep it more towards the center because remember, we're gonna be putting four more triangles in between. So that'll be covered up as well. So if you can kind of keep everything either under the corners of these triangles or under the future four triangles, you'll be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna speed it up and I'll finish this and then we'll move on. So here, right here, you can see I still have a little bit of a bulge. That's okay though. I'm just gonna worry about that when I go to do my next triangle. I'm gonna try to push all this up underneath of it. This might be that one corner that's always, <laughs> that's difficult. This is the one. So one, th whoops, one thing about snow globe ornaments is I always find that the wider out you start your first layer of triangles around the image, it's actually harder. It seems like it would be the opposite. It seems like it would be harder to closer in, but it's actually easier to hide all the lumps and bumps when your triangles are closer in to the center than when they're wide. So I'm thinking that probably like in hindsight here, I could have come a little closer maybe on the sides and that would have brought me a little closer on the top and bottom too, but it's okay. We're going to make it work anyway. All right. So I've still got these other ripples here in the center, but I do feel pretty confident that I'm going to be able to hide those. So at this point now we want to do four more marker pins and we want to do them the same, the same way that we did starting from the center nose or center point, whatever it is that is your center point and measuring down the other lines. So those four lines that are between the first four that we did. And we do want to keep these the same distance down. Now in this case, my ripple is starting above that point. So I definitely need to try to fix that before I move on. So I'm pulling this down like this, smoothing that part out, but that means I'm going to have to do a little more smoothing here. Don't be afraid to use lots of pins. Okay, so I actually think that this is gonna hide all that pretty well, but there is my first marker pin. I'm gonna do that all the way around in those remaining three spots. Of course, this one's going to give me fits because, you know, because I'm doing it for YouTube. <laughs> Every single one of these ornaments is different when it comes to these snow globes. Every fabric kind of lays different. I mean, even the fact that this iron on vinyl stuff is even like changing the way that it's working. So it's like every single one of these is different and you just never know. But just keep playing like I did and get everything as smooth as possible. And I think we're going to have good results here putting these last four triangles on. And this is gonna be exactly like we did before. Same prep, same everything. We're just gonna place them at these four new marker pins. And when you go to create these triangles, you want the lines that you create down the center to line up with the lines below, just like before. Aside from the lines helping you keep your triangles really straight and symmetrical and looking good on this side, it's also going to help a lot with whatever you do on the back. So any pattern you do, and for me I'm doing the basic star, but I'm going to line everything up with these lines. And so from the side, everything's going to line up and look really symmetrical. And it really makes a big difference in how the finished ornament looks. So right here, as I go to put this down, and by the way, I didn't say this, for this layer, you can go, for this these last four pieces, you can go ahead and pin down your outer corners as you go, um, but you may find that you've got a little bit of a ripple underneath, like what you're seeing here, and if you do, then you can work on pushing that down under to like where you know it's gonna be hidden underneath of your fabric, like this, before you pin down your outer corner. And that was a rough corner when I was trying to smooth it all out, but like now you can't even tell. Look at that, it looks pretty good. I'm actually really happy with that.
So I'm going to do this all the way around and then we'll be ready for layer two. And I'm totally going to use the pieces that I took out when I realized that my sound was not working. <laughs> I'm not really thrilled with this right here, so I'm actually going to undo this side and see if I can't work with this a little bit more. Well, that worked out. That was a lot easier than I thought. This is another one I'm a little worried about. Okay, that actually came out really nice considering all those wrinkles that are hidden underneath, but now no one is ever going to know. <laughs> so we're going to do the next layer. The next layer is super easy. It's going to go really fast. We're just going to be putting another set of triangles right on top of these. So I always like to go in the same order as far as the first four and the second four. So I'm going to start over my top, bottom, left and right sides, just like I did on the first layer and then do the same thing with the outer layer. And I'm gonna come down by just a small amount. We're just gonna leave a little edge. To be honest for this, because these pieces are so wide out from the center and they're already like overlapping the equator a little bit, we could totally get away with not doing two layers on him. But I just, I don't know, I tend to like doing two layers on these. So I'm gonna make another layer, but I'm gonna keep it only like a quarter of an inch or so from the tips of the first layer. And here's what I mean. You're going to prep your piece of fabric the same way. Here's one of my old pieces. And I'm going to come down from the tip of one of those first four pieces of layer one by about a quarter of an inch. And you can measure if you want to be exact. Push it down. You'll only be able to see a little bit of the tip of the uh, layer below. And then create your triangle the exact same way. And then when you create your triangle, make sure that line is uh, staying in line with the foam lines below, like always. And right now for this, for these first four pieces, you can go ahead and tack down those outer corners as well. You don't have to wait. So I'm going to do that here and then top left and right. And then I'm going to go in and do those um, other pieces as well. All right, there's the first four, and then I'll fill it in with the last four. So that is side one. That is so adorable. So if you're doing the same exact thing on side two, you're just going to flip it over and literally follow all the same steps. You're going to line up whatever your center is of your image with that other center pole and work your way out from there using the same measurements if your image is exactly the same. I'm going to be doing the basic star, so it's going to be a little bit different, but we'll go through that really quickly. I do want to mention that I've got some very in-depth videos that cover the basic star like start to finish and so i do encourage you to check those out i'll put a link below to my main basic star workshop but we'll go through it pretty quickly here just so that you can kind of see me get this finished um, and we're going to be going back to our two by three inch rectangles and this is going to be a really simple basic star because i'm doing the entire thing all in one color i really don't i just want to cover the back of this the focus point of this ornament is this side. So if you're following along and doing the basic star, you're going to grab another rectangle of that same fabric and I'm going to hold it face down and prep everything exactly the same. These triangles are going to go on literally exactly the same as all the other triangles. 
pinning through the top folded edge. And we're gonna pin this right into the pole on the opposite side of the ball. So I'm gonna pin it right there at the pole and I want the top folded edge of this to line up with one of the lines on the foam all the way across. And then that means that there's also gonna be a line running like this perpendicular right down the center this way. So we're gonna create our triangle exactly like before, folding down the left side and the right side. And because we tried to line up those lines, we want this new line down the center to align with the line on the foam. And see what happens here? That means it's gonna line up with the lines on the opposite side, on the pumpkin side, which is gonna make it look really good when it's hanging um, and you're looking at it from the side. So we'll go ahead and pin down the corners as well. And there's your first triangle. We're gonna do the exact same thing directly opposite. So this time I'm pinning this right up against the tip of the first triangle. I'm letting my pin touch that tip, but it's not piercing it. I just want it to touch. This way when I press it down, there's, no, there's not gonna be any gap of foam showing between the two triangles. And we're gonna create another triangle the same way. Remember, we're overlapping the left side with the right side just a hair. That way one pin will be able to hold down both halves. And again, we want this line to be in line with the line on the foam, which there's only a little bit left showing, but that means it's also gonna line up with the lines on side one. And we'll go ahead and pin down the corners. And then we're just gonna fill in those two remaining spots. So when you go to pin down the corners, by the way, I put that right up there in, in like the crook between those first two triangles. And again, not piercing that fabric, but just right up there against it. That way when you press it down and create your triangle, you don't have any gaps of foam showing from below. And when you go to pin down these corners, you're gonna see that they're gonna overlap your first two triangles just a little bit. And that is totally fine. Just like on side one, we're working on a curved surface. So there's gonna be some overlap here. And then again, we're just gonna fill in this last spot, making sure the pin is sitting right up in there. If you go to create this triangle and you see gaps of foam showing through, it probably means that your pin, your top pin is not close enough to the very center point and you need to nudge it up in there a little bit closer. Okay, that is layer one, easy, right? So for layer two, we're gonna be placing triangles directly on top of the first four triangles that we placed, except that we're gonna come down from the center point by a little bit, like I'm gonna do about a half of an inch. That way we're, we're leaving a half of an inch of this first layer showing. And this is a three layer basic star. Depending on how many layers you're doing, you may change this distance a little bit, but I'm thinking a half, an, a half of an inch is probably good. So I'm gonna measure down from my center point. The center point is where all those first points converge. And that is about right. And then press that flat down like this. And then I'm gonna create my triangle just as always. Now we can't see the lines on the foam any longer. They're like totally covered up, but we can see the lines on the opposite side. So as long as you're looking at those, they follow the lines as well. So that means you're on track. And that's what we really are aiming for here. We want all of our lines to match so that when you're looking at it from the side, Everything looks really nice and even. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin down my outer corners. Like that. And we're gonna do that over the remaining four triangles. And I always like to, like I said before, I like to come opposite to opposite. So I'm gonna come over here. Now, here's the thing you're doing, even when you're not using all one color, but especially when you're using all one color, it can be really hard to keep track of where the center point is it's gonna like as you add more pieces it starts to get easy to lose it so if you want to you can take a pin and stick it into the center point just leave it sticking out like halfway just like we did with the marker pins on the snow globe side and that way you will always know where your center is because as we start adding all these other points it can get a little bit confusing so i'm going to prep my next piece and I'm looking at my center point, not the point that we just put on, and I'm gonna come down by a half of an inch, same distance down from the center. So right about there. And again, I'm just checking my lines and making sure everything is lining up. All right, and then we're gonna do the exact same thing, opposite those two, same distance from the center. Right, 
that's the first four pieces, but we actually want to do four more pieces on this layer, but this time they're going to sit between the four that we just did. Again, it can be a little bit hard to see when you're doing all one color like this, but you've got your center uh, marked here in the middle if you use that, but where all those points originally converged, that is still your center no matter what. And for these four pieces, you're coming down a half of an inch between the triangles, right along the line that's between those last four triangles. So coming down by half of an inch, like that. And I'm creating my triangle just like always. And I'm definitely covering up a bunch of the triangles that I had just put on. But what we're ending up with here is points of a star. And when we do that between the last three open spaces here, we're gonna have a star in the center which is pretty nifty. Because we're following our lines and stuff, everything ends up looking really nice and even. Instead of having like a wonky star, your star will look pretty even. And you can get to where you can eyeball this, but I do like to just double check sometimes with the tape measure and make sure that I'm keeping the same distance from my center point. Because sometimes it'll seem like when you eyeball that it's going to be right on, but then later on you look at it and you're like, oh, the star looks a little, a little weird. <laughs> okay, so that is the end of layer two, and you can see that star shape in the center. Even though it's all one color, you can still see that star. Now we're gonna do one more layer and we're gonna do it exactly the same way, but bring it out even further. So we're gonna create another star. And I think I'm probably gonna bring it out about the same distance again. Like I'm thinking about a half of an inch. And what I'm really going for here is that it will bring me to the center point. And I may have a little bit of overlap, but that's okay. And I'll show you how to handle that. Let's get the first piece prepped. And one other thing, when I'm doing the next layer, I always like to start over the same four pieces I started with in the previous layer. And you can always tell because those first four pieces in the previous layer are partially covered up. You can only see a little bit of them. And then the last four pieces in the layer are the ones that you can see the entire thing. Just for consistency, and it's not completely necessary, but just for consistency and it makes it look really, I don't know, polished <laughs> at the end, I like to start over those first four. And then this layer will look just like the last layer. Okay, so I'm creating my triangle, really focusing on my lines. I want my line to line up with the lines below and then also line up with the line opposite. And it looks like that's happening and that's great, but I am getting a lot of overlap into side one. So what I wanna do here is pin at the bottom of this, but I wanna keep the pin where I know the center of this ornament's gonna be, which for me, if I'm looking at this from the side, visually, I can just kind of see that this should be where the center is between the two halves. And so that's where I wanna keep my pin line. That way I can cover my pins with a band later on. That means that I might have to pin a little higher up on my triangles than I did before. Because I want, even though the fabric's overlapping, as long as you keep your pins up higher, you can always trim the fabric that's hanging down below. And we're gonna need to do that. So if I just focus on keeping my pins in that line around the center, and it's really not hard to judge where that center will be if you turn it sideways like I was saying and look at it and just kind of visualize where you want the center of this to be. That looks to me like halfway, so I wanna keep my pins there. All right, and so I've done my first triangle. I'm gonna come directly opposite and finish the first, I'm gonna do this one, and then finish the um, opposing two as well. Okay, so there's the first four. Before I move on, I want to go ahead and trim up everything that's below those pins. 
where I know the center is going to be. You could wait and do this after all eight of these pieces on this layer, but I find it easier to do the first half and then the second half later, and it'll help reduce some of the bulk. All right, let's do those last four pieces. Okay, that is the end of layer three. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that center marker pin now and then also trim up this excess. All right, so now this is ready for the band. And you know what? I'm such a dork because I just realized that I didn't talk about the band in the supply part at the beginning of this video. <laughs> There's a band, guys, that needs to wrap around this. And we're gonna need it to be about two inches wide by about 10 and a half inches long and in the same fabric and that is to cover all of those raw edges so here's what this looks like we're going to flip this over and hold it with the pattern side facing away and you're going to fold in one side about two-thirds of the way like this lengthwise and then fold in the other side the same amount and what you'll have is a long band with a raw edge running down this side but when you flip it over there are no raw edges showing and that's what we want. So we're gonna flip this over. I lost hold of it here. We're gonna flip this over and starting at the top right here, we're gonna lay this face down so the raw edges are hidden. Right here where we want, we're gonna have the end of it where we want the top to be and then have it coming down over the raw edges and pins. And once you have it where you want it, go ahead and take a couple of pins and pin it in place like this. And then we're just gonna continue that fold, wrapping it around, and then hiding all those raw edges. And you wanna pull this pretty taut because you don't want it to look all poofy from the side, but you don't wanna pull it so tight that you yank, like if you have a pattern in your fabric that you make it all distorted. I just don't like it when you can see a lot of um, like puffiness from the side. But once you come back to your starting point, which is right there, I'm gonna just overlap it and then take another couple of pins and pin it to hold it in place like this. And if you have any excess, you can go ahead and lop it off. Then we're actually now ready to put the bows and the hanger on. So I've got this cutesy green loopy ribbon here. I'm just gonna make a couple of bows out of this. So at one end of your ribbon, stick a pin through it, and then you're just gonna take this and loop it about two, two and a half inches, however big you want your loops, and then pin right back through it. I tend to go for like, I think it's about two inches. In fact, let me measure this out for you. Might be two and a half. Oh, it might be three. <laughs> so I'm like a little over three here. And if you want to, if you're having a hard time keeping your loops even as you do this, you could always measure each one and then pin right back through. But I like to eyeball because we're gonna be actually stacking a couple of bows on top of each other and you won't see like minor imperfections. I'm just gonna continue looping and then pinning and looping again. Now, one thing I do want to mention to you guys is we have a handy little tool called a bow tie template. Let me grab it for you and show you. Looks like this. Hopefully you can see that because it's clear, but this is actually, it will help you make perfect loops. You wrap your ribbon around it and then stick your pin right through the center where the grooves are. And there's three different sizes here. You can do a three inch, three and a quarter inch and then a smaller one here, two and three quarters. Now we sell this acrylic version in the shop, but we've also got a free print printable version of that that you can download and cut out and then just stick it to like some cardboard or something like that. And that is that works perfectly. So if you want that, I'll stick the link to the free printable 
right below this video and hopefully you'll find that helpful. So I usually use about 24 inches or so of ribbon for my bows, but once you get to the end and you've got your bow looking the way that you want it, just snip off any excess and then we can stick this right up on top over where we started and ended the band like that. Okay, that is just so darn cute. I love it. I'm gonna do one more bow on top of that one the same exact way. So I just finished this and I just was going on without telling you what I'm doing. I'm just gonna pin this right on top of my first bow. This is actually some pretty thick ribbon. So I'm gonna use a little piece of fabric here to help press my pin through it so I don't break my finger. Like, oh my gosh, that is so cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna make a hanger with the same ribbon. Now this is gonna be however long you wanna make your hanger. I usually do like, I don't know, nine or 10 inches or so. And you're just gonna take this, loop the ends together, and take something decorative like a pearl pin or a beaded pin. And of course, I also forgot to mention that in the beginning. And use that to hold your loop together, hold the two ends together. I've just got a little green pearl pen and I'm gonna stick this right down on top of that last bow, right where that last pin is showing. And again, I'm gonna to have to use something to push this down with. That ribbon was like really thick. It's kind of a struggle to push through that, but I prevailed. And now look, that is so cute. I just love it so much. This is the first one I made with this fabric. So I'm totally in love. I hope you guys are too. So let me recap what we've got um, below for you. We've got the printable supply list. I've also got my basic star workshop, which will teach you how to do this pattern from start to finish and in a whole lot more detail as well. And we'll put a link to where you can get the adorable little vinyl pumpkin faces. I hope you love making this. If you've got any questions at all, please be sure to put them in the comments below and we will help you out the best that we can. Thank you so much for watching. Happy ornamenting.